We've got championship weekend. I say weekend because not every game is on Saturday. In fact, maybe the, the, the most interesting game, the win and in game, is on Friday. Oregon and Washington, that game is in Vegas. Oregon is a nine and a half point favorite despite losing, losing by three at Washington earlier this season. Some big spreads, Texas minus 14 and a half against Oklahoma. Michigan minus 23 against Iowa. That game uh, on CBS Saturday at four Eastern. Georgia minus six against Alabama and Florida State only a two and a half point favorite against Louisville. All the other games are on Saturday, but let's start with the Friday game. Oregon against Washington. Brady, you said you believe the winner of this is in. Oregon, I thought, was the better team in that first matchup. Uh, Washington ended up winning it on a, on a missed field goal late in that game. Right. Nine and a half's a lot, though. It's a lot. This was a really surprising number for me, considering how close the margin was in the previous game between these two teams. And look, both of these offenses are extremely dynamic, in particular for the quarterback spot with Bo Nix and Michael Penix. I think the difference for me is Washington's displayed the fact that they're a little bit more balanced, too. They've been running the football better. I think early in the season, that was a little more of a concern. Defensively, I definitely think there's still some concerns there for Washington, even though they've been able to play in some tighter, low-scoring games of late. So this number is just too big for me. Maybe I'm the fish. Maybe I'm the hook here, Danny. But I'm going to go ahead and take the 9.5 points here in the Huskies. I, you know, these two teams, since that game, it's almost like they've gone in two different directions. And you would expect Washington for them beating Oregon to kind of propel them in the back end of the season. They get more confidence. But it's kind of gone the opposite. Washington has kind of floundered around. And the Ducks have used that motivation or whatever it was. Maybe it's a confidence build. Or maybe they look at that game and be like, we were the better team. We were 0 for 3 on fourth down. We should have won it. And they have used it kind of to really propel themselves on a really impressive back end of the season. The thing that's concerning for me, because I'm going to lay them with Washington, is before the game against Washington State, it was seven. And there's, so they're saying, man, that game against Washington State, the Apple Cup, that was bad. I don't even want to count that game because I think it's normal. Like, you're, it's a just get through a type of game. Boy, did they escape with the game winning field goal. But I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the compilation of the last month of the season where it looks to me like Michael Penix is banged up. Like something is not right with him. I also wonder if the physicality of the season is starting to catch up and Oregon's getting better and stronger as the season so goes So what's on. your pick? I'm going to lay him. Yeah, I'm going to lay him. He's and I'm going to go on the over too because I do think Oregon will score against that Washington defense. And I think Washington, it's more one of those backdoor covers where they just start throwing it around to try to keep Did it Did you flip-flop? Because I th it says here Oregon. I'm on Oregon. He's on Oregon. You are Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's on gotcha, Washington. Gotcha, I'm on Oregon. Gotcha. It just I'm took Washington. us a minute to yeah. get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was giving us all I, of the I thought you said lay in with here. Washington. I might That's have, why I was but I'm on Oregon. <laughs> we're, we're actually on polar opposites. Yeah, yeah. Here, Everything I, I also think this will be just under that number. I think second team these two times play a little different story. And, and look, the one thing for Washington, Jalen McMillan has gotten healthy too as the season's gone on. That's a tough wide receiver group to stop for Oregon's defense. Uh, obviously a little different story earlier this year when they played. Mm -hmm. Danny, you talked about Washington and Washington State and the rivalry game and you know having to just get through those Alabama had one of those games in the Iron Bowl against Auburn that one is always so wild and I feel like Nick Saban is still trying to figure out what the heck happened on that last play but regardless uh, the tide now move ahead to that championship game against Georgia is there an opportunity for Alabama to beat this Georgia team you think I do not. Uh, I think Alabama is going to get beat, and I think they're going to get beat by a touchdown or more. I've liked Georgia sort of the back end of the season, and I think it started in the game against Florida, maybe before that, against Kentucky, when all of a sudden they completely dominated that performance, and then they really have not looked back. And I thought Carson Beck, I think maybe one of the best things that happened to Georgia was Brock Bowers being out for that month of the season because it allowed other pieces of the puzzle to jump up and to start contributing. And last week, again, another game that was kind of like, it wasn't a strong but it was just closer than you would have expected. Brock Bowers didn't play. Ladd McConkey didn't play. It was like they were prepping for this game. Now, I did back myself into a quarter, Haley, because I said before, I said, man, I think uh, Georgia is going to boat race uh, Georgia. I, 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 excuse me. George is going to boat race Alabama. Mildly nervous that I got a little bit cocky before, but I am not sold on Jalen Milrow has all of a sudden figured out the quarterback position and the defense is fixed. I think George is going to be right back in the playoff. Look, Alabama and, and Jalen Milrow, it's still a work in progress offensively, but they've come a long way from where they were. And I think this is going to be one of those special Jalen Milrow games where his legs play a huge factor. Some of the big shots, too, downfield. They've got a ton of speed. And you can say what you want about last week's game. Obviously, a rivalry game. They always tend to be closer than we think. 
What happens, though, when you make a play like that, a miraculous play, <laughs> you start to believe that divine intervention is a part of this season for Alabama. There's no other way to put it. Fourth and 31 at the end Seven of the game to win it, that's it? Market. Like, there is no other explanation. I am taking the points here and Alabama. This is the best defense that Carson Beck and this Georgia offense has faced all year. It, you, we know about some of the different matchups between Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. I just have a hard time thinking that this isn't going to be a tight game and that we're not going to see this one come down to the end. So don't be surprised if you see some offensive struggles from Georgia, lower scoring game. But this is one where I'm telling you, man, Alabama's been kind of flying under the radar all year after that loss to Texas. This might be where they surprise everyone, and we see Nick Saban once again get back into the college football playoff. And a game that is almost as important as that one to Alabama fans will be taking place in Dallas, the Big 12 championship, because all those Bama fans are going to be rooting for Oklahoma State to pull the upset over a Texas team that won by double digits in Bama earlier this season that's been ranked ahead of Bama, all playoff rankings long. These two teams have not played each other yet this year. It's a two-touchdown spread. Yeah, it's a big, too big of a spread to me. I think the hook in particular is kind of uh, what gets me. And this is a Texas team that's without Jonathan Brooks. I know C.J. Baxter and Blue has been good, too, in the backfield for them. But when I look at Oklahoma State, they have been the, the definition of overachieving this year. Mike Gundy never gets enough credit for the job he does with this team. And Ollie Gordon's tough to stop. I know they have the defensive front, at least to outmatch Oklahoma State. But I think Mike Gundy finds ways of getting Gordon to the edges. And there's just enough done in the passing game with Bohm there to make some things happen happen so I'm gladly take the 14 and a half points here it's just too big of a number for me in a conference championship weekend can any one of you guys tell me which Oklahoma State's going to show up <laughs> I mean like I was all in on Oklahoma State and they and I was like man UCF that number it feels fishy I'm like am I going to take it and I was like ah, don't worry about it they get blown out in Orlando by a not very good UCF team I just don't trust them in this position and I do feel like Texas has been just kind of all it's all been culminating for this moment where Sark can say hey we're back to the party and I do think the fact that that Bama conversation is out there they got the other style one, points they got to have style points I don't like this game I wouldn't bet it I will, I will stay away from this one but because we're making pet uh, bets I trust Texas more to win and, and get those style points in this one Let's move on to the ACC, and this one interesting, guys. It's Louisville taking on Florida State. Florida State just barely the favorite there at minus two and a half. Now, DK, right at the beginning of the season, you on your conspiracy theory said if Florida State beats Clemson, they're going to the national championship. So they're almost at the crust of that. But earlier in the year, you guys had a conversation oh, about really? Florida State. Oh, uh, so I just want to remind you guys the conversation. Let's take a look at oh, what I they know had exactly. to say. I know our producer, all these guys are going to be all hyped up for Florida State this year. Be careful now. That might be a train that's leading kind of nowhere and might run off the tracks as Clemson flies right by. One thing's in common with all these people hyping up Florida State. They all, they all happen to go to Florida State. They all <laughs> happen to graduate. There's no one outside of Florida State fans who actually think Florida State is, is a part of this hype right now. they got to see it in order to believe it. And I think it's a fair thing to say. You saw how they finished the season. They have to go to the swamp to take on Florida in Gainesville. Wow. Thanks, Haley. Haley's a good host. If Haley's a good host, she'll give you context. When was that said, Haley? That was in June. I will say that was in June, but okay. I will also say that the tweet attached to it said that it was the worst thing they had seen on Twitter that day. So, well, um, which is perfectly Brady, fine I wanna... in June because there's a lot of bad things that I... I'll take. The, I'll take the segment out of here. I'll take the segment I will let you take Thank over you and that, kind Haley. of talk a little that. bit about Florida State. Okay, uh, I would say this. Look, Florida State's in a tough spot. Because I also think they're a team that has to win, not only win convincingly, because there's precedent for us seeing a backup and Tate Rodemaker going to the college football playoff and not only doing that, winning the national championship. We saw with Cardell Jones, the difference is they beat the doors off of Wisconsin in that Big Ten championship. It was, what, 59 nothing, something like that? I'm not saying the Florida State has to beat Louisville by that much. It's a good Louisville team, though. I know they struggled. They lost last week to, to Kentucky, and maybe that plays a role in all this, but they've got enough playmakers and Jordan, uh, Jordan in the backfield, thrashed to a wide receiver. Their defense has been probably the most consistent piece. This will be a challenge, and I think the playmakers, Benson in the backfield, Coleman on the outside, 
they have to step up and be special because you don't want to put the sort of pressure on Tay Rodemaker to, to lead them and have to win in this environment. I think last week they ended up pulling away versus a backup quarterback on the road in Florida. This will be a little bit different pressure, different challenge for them. So I'm going to lay the points here with Florida State because uh, it would be a shame. It yeah. would be a shame to think that you got this far. I know. So far for Noah, our producer, who put that together. Yeah. And then for you, Danny, <laughs> I know. who's been such a big Florida State guy the whole year. I, I, I know. It would be such a shame <laughs> it to watch them lose to Louisville in the ACC championship and pain. not make it. It would pain everybody it would be in this building. For me to I know watch it. it really would. It really would be. I don't even know if they beat Clemson at this point I if they know. played again, but it would I be know. so painful to watch that. It would. I'll say this. Uh, I'm going to back Florida State. Shocker. I'm going <laughs> to lay them. When I watch Tate Rodemaker, he reminds me of my 16 year old daughter who just started driving, right? We're still working on it, okay? <laughs> Hear me out. Ready? So when she drives, she's going super slow. And I'm like, you can go a little bit faster. Like, come on. She doesn't recognize the speed of what's happening. Mm -hmm. That was Tate Rodemaker in the first half. Things were, like, way fast for him. And he doesn't realize, like, hey, there's a pressure coming because he's been wearing the green jersey, hasn't had live contact. After the first half, after he kind of survived that without making the big mistake, I thought he did settle in the game, made some nice throws, came back after the big hit. I think he's going to play much better. I think the team will play much better defensively. I love the over probably is one of the best plays because I think there's too many weapons. Even if you get Benson going in the run game, I don't think Louisville's going to be able to stop him. But I do think Jeff Brom, great offensive mind. I think he'll have some points on the board too. Can you send out a group text next time your daughter's <laughs> yes. on the road just so we can all no, be Oh, trust me. <laughs> trust me. I will. I'll I'm be sure on the she drives in the team. right lane, <laughs> yeah. not the speed lane or That's the express right. lanes. By the way, we'll, we'll, we'll get your take yeah. after Alabama beats Georgia and they leave. 13 and 0 Florida State out hey, of the college football watch playoff. Out, watch I, out. I, I, I hope that doesn't happen either. <laughs> Big Ten championship game. We saved the worst for last. Michigan 23 <laughs> point favorites against Iowa. The last five times that Iowa has played a ranked team, they've lost by an average of 26 points per game. Yeah, this is one where it, the number looks big to me only because uh, Michigan knows they, they win and they're in. And I think this is going to be an ugly, ugly game. And I was going to be out without their uh, their best player, uh, Dejon Cooper, uh, at, a, at the safety, or excuse me, cornerback Cooper position. Zane. Cooper Zane, excuse yeah. me. Um, and returning as well, which will hurt them, because that's, I mean, <laughs> that's well, their offense. Yeah. Cooper Zane yeah. actually is an offensive weapon, even though he plays defense and special teams. So that's your concern there. It's just a big spread and a big number for a really sound, solid, fundamental defense. And this is how you know who your Iowa fans are. Chris, how many unders have hit in a row for uh, Iowa. Almost all of them. They, they've only they're ten and two. They, right? Yeah, they're ten and two on the season. I think they've hit their Six last what eight. I think it's the last eight or nine yeah. games. Have all hit the under. My best bet in this one is actually the over. Oh, so the spread's so big. I think it's gonna be hard to see. Does Michigan come out just pound them right away? And so you have Iowa Michigan scoring away. forty plus. <laughs> so I, I think the best play is the over. But I'll go ahead and take the the, the points in Iowa because I don't know that Michigan feels like they need to necessarily be a blowout in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're in, they win and they're in. The most interesting thing from this game is going to see Jim Harbaugh if he's going to go take the uh, yeah, Big Ten Championship trophy from Tony Petit at the stage. Yeah, that's going to be awkward. I'm on Iowa, too. I think they're more than comfortable playing ugly. Can they get enough stops? And I do think Michigan banged up along the offensive line, just banged up in general. I mean, every time you see Blake Corum, if he's got his bloody nose coming out, and they have depth, but I just... Again, to your point, I don't think they care about style points. I think they kind of just want to try to get in, get out, get healthy, and then start focusing towards the ultimate goal. I'll say this. I know Sharon Moore is going to be very popular for the Broyles Award as the best assistant in college football. Phil Parker, the defensive coordinator at Iowa, <laughs> deserves almost every accolade because of what he's had to overcome and has to win and, games with the defense. And they really could be an 11-win team when yeah. you think about should it. Be. They exactly. should be. For right? a like, call. It's, and so to your point, like dealing with all the unders, the low scoring, the way they've played, like it's been an unbelievable year for Phil Parker in this defense. I, I know we're laughing from everyone kids, but the truth of the matter is like this has been a good, solid, sound team for Iowa. They just have struggled scoring points. And you'll be there. You'll have a first row seat. I, I've got two tickets for you too. You and your pup. My pup? <laughs> your pup. That's my yeah, that's my dad. Uh, Donnie, go. I don't think Donnie wants to see that uh, <laughs> firsthand either. Guys, thank you so much. Getting picks here for the Power Five championship games. We didn't get our weekend. best bets. Well, oh, that's what we want to do. Yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I was ready. <laughs> oh, I was ready just in case. Oh, we you got him, baby. Mine is. So that, Florida that's State. That's what went off of my phone too early. It was actually the Florida State's <laughs> right. song. Poor Dan. That's my ringtone. No, I'm going with Florida State as the best bet of the weekend. Before the game against Florida, uh, even with Jordan Travis being out, Florida State was a six-and-a-half-point favorite against Louisville. 
And then they saw the Florida game, and everybody backed off and was like, we're scared. Like I said before, I think Tate Rodemaker is going to bounce back, play better, and I think they win by uh, by more than a field goal. He definitely can sling. He's got a live yeah. arm. He's, he's very capable of making those plays. He's about getting up to speed. Uh, I've got the over <laughs> of, of Michigan-Iowa. It sounds a little bit crazy, but I do think this will be a more high-scoring game than 35.5 points. Oh, Iowa team total, I think, is 6.5. Yeah. Yeah, so you're expecting a lot of points from Michigan in that case. I don't think Iowa gets to six. <laughs> I kind of like over the team total of six. I mean, it's all it's three field goals, so that, that field goal game was shaky. Well, did Putty, you see? Putty, their yeah. backup might be the answer. He Punting might be is their specialty. Yes. So that's, that's true. Yeah, Carl yeah. Pepper, their punt coordinator, is, is one of the top coaches in the country. Maybe of he course. Be the he gets a lot of practice, yeah, right? Definitely. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for the Punch. picks. Um, cover three podcast. You guys on this at all this week? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he okay. is. Yeah. Latest episode right now is on the coaching carousel. We will soon have the drop of the championship weekend preview.